Zero. Really? Yeah. You want to know why? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Please. Yeah, it's just zero. I thought SpaceX, going to go to Mars. I have an unorthodox view on this, so you don't have to, you don't have to believe me. You, you know, but my read of history tells me that we only do big, expensive things if there's a geopolitical reason for it, either an economic reason or a defense reason, uh, not just because it's the next thing to do. And when we went to the moon, you realize in 1961, May 25th, President Kennedy, so six weeks after Yuri Gagarin flew around the earth in orbit, and we didn't have a, a ship that wouldn't blow up on the launch pad that could carry humans yet, he calls a joint session of Congress and says, if the events of recent weeks couldn't even utter the man's name, the events of recent weeks, and I paraphrase, are any indication of the impact of this adventure on the minds of men everywhere, then we need to show the world the path of freedom over the path of tyranny. It's a battle cry against communism, the godless Russians, everyone in the whole Soviet Union. We were losing a technological race. And that was the battle cry that prompted Congress to write the check. Oh, later on he says, oh, it'll be, uh, put a man on the moon and before return him to safely earth. And uh, oh, that's all beautiful. Let's hold hands. That's so beautiful. No one ever spent scads of money just because it was a cool thing to do. That has never happened ever. So we go to the moon. People forgetting why we went to the moon say, while we're on the moon, at this rate, we'll be on Mars by 1985. That'll be the next ambitious goal we'll take on. No. Because we didn't just go to the moon because that was the next thing to do. We went to the moon to beat the Russians. And when we got to the moon and we looked over our shoulder and the Russians weren't there, we canceled the Apollo program. We haven't been back to the moon in 53 years. We canceled it. Apollo 18 was ready to fly. It's now in captivity in Huntsville, Alabama, in a museum on its side. It's fascinating to walk the full length of it. All rocket re flight ready parts. It never flew. We ended at Apollo 17. No, we didn't go to Mars because we didn't have geopolitical reasons to do so, neither economic nor for defense reasons. Historically, people explored, did expensive things for the glory of God and royalty. Very expensive. The pyramids, the honor of royalty, okay? The church building, cathedral building, all of these activities were in the glory of power, deity and royalty. There's, none of that happens today. We're past that the power of kings and gods that doesn't happen. Nobody dislodges major resources, capital resources of a nation in the interest of a god or a king anymore. Okay? It's secular. And secular means it's money or it's war because you feel threatened. Okay. So, you know we're going back to the moon now. Yeah. Project Artemis. Did you ever think to stop and ask Why? Why didn't we stay on the moon in 1972? Why don't we go back in 1980 or 1990, 2000, 2010? Oh, all of a sudden, let's go back to the moon. Wouldn't that be cool? Do you know when Artemis began? In the late teens? Right about when China says, we're going to put Taikonauts on the moon. Taikonauts? Oh, yeah, Chinese astronaut. Taikonaut. Uh, uh. All right. That's when we said, oh, let's go back to the moon. What a good idea. Let's do that. Really? Because we, we, because it's just a good idea? Because we're a little bit spooked by a friendly foe across the, around the world might get the glory of that exercise. And once again, it's a godless country. Okay? Communism mm -hmm. is godless by design, by construct. So here we are going back to the moon. All right. What motivation do we have to go to Mars? Are there oil wells there? Is there, you know, diamond mines? 
We're not going to Mars. We're just not. Unless China says they want to put military bases on Mars. We're going to be on Mars in 10 months. <laughs> One month to design, build, and fund the thing, and nine months to get to Mars. A geopolitical force operating. Oh, and by the way, NASA doesn't have a rocket that'll get us to Mars. They think they do, but they don't really have one yet. Time to do that. They say, well, does anybody have a rocket? Elon says, I have a rocket. So if Elon rocket goes to Mars, it's not because he sends it there. It's because taxpayers sent it there. By the way, he could go there on a vanity project, but there's no business case. He, he could fly to Mars, team up with Jeff Bezos. They can send people to Mars. It's not a business case. And if you are an investor in his company, you would not agree to do that. You wouldn't. But he doesn't need investors because he's very wealthy. He could do it on his own. Are you going to Mars as a tourist? Is that, is that a business case? It'll, it's a trillion dollars to get to Mars first. Second will be a little less. I don't see that happening. A trillion dollars? About that, yeah. If Earth were a schoolroom globe, with your fist, show me where you think the moon is. This is Earth. Put, <laughs> take your fist and put it at the distance the moon is. Your fist is about the right size compared. Okay. Put I it mean. Right there? Yeah. Okay, not too bad. It's 30 feet away. It's in the next room. Okay. Okay. okay? 30 feet away. Okay. That's the moon. Let's keep going. How far away from Earth did the Bezos-Branson uh, rockets go? Oh, not far. The thickness of two dimes above the surface of the Earth. How far away is Mars? It's a mile away. From here? Yes, <laughs> from this Earth. It's a mile away. It's in Central Park. The moon, 30 feet away, Mars a mile away. Yeah, it's a trillion dollars to Mars. Yes. How long? Nine months. If, and you have to wait till the planets are configured so that when you travel, you arrive where Mars will be when you get there. And that's a minimum energy orbit. If you had filling stations along the way, you can just fill up with fuel and get there as fast as you want. But minimum energy orbit takes about nine months. And then to come back, you have to wait till it's configured again a few years later. So a round trip to Mars is three to five years, easily. So there's not an economic case. I'm not saying we don't know how to get to Mars. We have a SUV-sized rover there now, all right, discovering potential life from a billion years ago. It's not like we don't know how to get to Mars. This is not a technological statement I'm making. I'm talking about a practical statement. So, no. My read of history tells me no. I, I thought you were going to also add to that that even if Elon wanted to do it as a vanity project because he makes all this money and manages to use Starlink as a way to fund it, whatever, that the problem is Elon's going to die. He's going to die in the, you know, the next couple of decades, which means the vanity element that comes from his childhood situation where he wanted to get out there and explore the stars because he read that book has got 30 years, 40, 50 years left on it. Well, that would make him want to hurry, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And plus he said, I don't want to die on Earth. I want to die on Mars. Mm -hmm. I'm paraphrasing, but that's the idea. So that's a goal. Sure. But don't tell me it's a, it's, it's a, it's a business case. I can see a tourist case going into orbit and even possibly visiting the moon. It's three days there, three days back. That's a week's vacation that you would take. And I would save up five years, 10 years of vacation money if that was the amount that it would take to go to the moon in, for one week. That would be a really fun bucket list item for me. You know, you've written this, you've revised this book. Oh, yeah, Just Visiting This Planet. Yeah, I wrote a, a column a question and an answer column for like 10 years, 15 years, where people just asked me questions from the public. And I had a pen name called Merlin. And Merlin was friends with, with Newton and Galileo and Marie Curie and all these people. So if you ask Merlin, dear Merlin, I don't quite understand gravity. Merlin would say, oh, Merlin had a conversation with Isaac Newton in his backyard. And here's how he answers that. I think in the book you talk about a golf ball sized black hole would weigh more than Earth and swallow it whole, leaving behind something the size of a lime. Yeah, slightly bigger, right. What is, uh, you've been asked this so many times, but I still don't know the answer. What is a black hole and how do we even know if they're real, if no one's ever been to one? Well, you can know things without visiting them. I mean, that's 
The methods and tools and machines of science are remarkable in their ability to learn something without actually having to see it with your eyes or hear it with your ears or to touch it with your fingers. We have, in fact, science didn't take off until these machines became a fundamental part of how we investigated the world, replacing our five senses. Mm -hmm. Because there's nothing more feeble in this world than you thinking you understand reality through your five senses. That, that, I don't want to call it feeble. I would call it error-prone. Error-prone. Remember I told you about escape velocity of Earth? Yeah. Do you remember what I, the value I said it was? Seven miles per, Paid attention. per minute. Per second. Per second. <laughs> That's very fast. Seven miles per So the adage, what goes up must come down, mm -hmm. it's not true. It's true for almost anything you would experience. But you can launch something at seven miles per second. It'll never, ever come back. That's the escape velocity for Earth. Okay. If Earth had more mass and the gravity were stronger, mm -hmm. the escape velocity is higher. That would make sense because yeah. there's more gravity that you have to escape. Mm -hmm. Let's keep up that exercise. Cram in more and more mass. Just keep doing that. Escape velocity keeps going up. Eventually, the escape velocity hits the speed of light. At that point, light can't even escape. Light is the fastest thing in the universe. If light can't escape, if you fall in, you don't escape either. There's no better description of a hole than that. And worse yet, it's a hole in any direction you approach it. Not just a hole in the street or in the floor. It's a three-dimensional hole. And how do we know it's there? Because it distorts the fabric of space and time around it. We see galaxies behind concentrations of matter, black holes, and the shape of the galaxy is distorted. Because Einstein tells us, tells us that gravity distorts the fabric of space and time. So that's one way we discover black holes. Another way is most stars in the night sky are binary and multiple star systems, most of them. You can't see it because you just have human vision. You whip out a telescope, you see, oh my gosh, there are two stars, not just one. Mm -hmm. If there's a pair of stars and one of them becomes a black hole and this one ages, it expands and some of its material spills onto and orbits around the event horizon of the black hole. This swirling material gets hotter and hotter and hotter and it radiates X-rays and ultraviolet. We have X-ray and ultraviolet telescopes that see every one of these in the night sky. They're all black holes. And it's created from an explosion? Uh, there's a, a star that wants to explode, but it has so much mass, the explosion doesn't overcome the gravity, and the star <laughs> collapses down on itself to make a black hole. There's one way to make a black hole. So our sun, when that runs no, it's not going to become black hole. It's pretty wimpy in that department. It'll still kill us, but for different reasons. <laughs> so the mass of the object is so big that it can't actually explode because the gravitational pull Correct. inwards is so strong. Correct. That's above a certain threshold. Within there, there's the stars that the explosion is greater than what the gravity can contain, and it makes a supernova. And those are the stars that spread heavy elements across the galaxy, enabling us to even exist. So I'm going to read this again. A golf ball-sized black hole would weigh more than Earth and swallow it whole, leaving behind something the size of a lime. Yeah, so when black holes eat, they get bigger. So a lime is bigger than a golf ball, but not by very much. We can calculate what the size is. Where would everything go? <laughs> it's in there. It's compressed down inside the hole. And, if I was, and everything near it's going to get pulled in there as well? Uh, if it comes too close, right. If it comes too close. Yeah, you can stay, you can keep your distance. Black holes, don't, they're not giant sucking devices. I mean, if you keep your distance, you're, if the sun became a black hole right now, we would still orbit it. The gravity we feel at our distance is no different. You say that if the sun suddenly shut off, we'd freeze at minus 462 Fahrenheit, which is the 